right, cool. We're live. So, welcome everyone uh, to another episode of the Streamit Show. And uh, today I have a really interesting guest with us, uh, Edward Schmo from VV8. Uh, how are you doing today, Edward? Hello. Uh, yeah, great. Excited to be here. And yeah. Awesome. Where are you joining from? Where, where are you currently located? I'm based in uh, Berlin, Germany right now. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome again. And uh, just for the uh, folks that are joining in at the moment, if you have questions throughout this entire uh, show that we are running at the moment, please put them in the comments if you're on X or LinkedIn or YouTube. You just put it on the chat, wherever you can see this, where you're watching us, and we'll be able to fill those questions at the end of the show, and uh, we'll get those questions answered for you. And <laughs> like I said, Edward is from WeV8, and before we even kind of jump straight into the amazing world of vector database yesterday, uh, which I'm really excited about, and I know most of you are, we just want to get started with first talking about the background, uh, Edward's background, which I think is also very interesting to, to, to start off with. So. Edward, um, you graduated from Berlin University of Applied Sciences at Berlin uh, with a Bachelor's of Applied Sciences. And uh, I found your thesis very interesting to begin with. So I personally was in the healthcare field and your thesis kind of focused on using machine learning to create better access to health by providing uh, better recommendations for supplements uh, using M machine learning. So that was very, very interesting um, for me. And uh, You've also worked as a machine learning engineer at Explosion, um, uh, a company, uh, and these are some really interesting uh, places that you've worked at. And now you're at WeV8, kind of doing some really groundbreaking stuff. And uh, we've seen a lot of stuff from you all, uh, absolutely. And I was talking to you about this, how uh, you guys do a really good job of uh, getting content to us. And on top of that, you are an indie game developer. Which is always something very. <laughs> you're the first so indie game. Yeah, you're the first indie game developer in this in this show. So, um, <laughs> that's awesome. yeah, celebration, absolutely. And uh, on top of that, you're also like an open source enthusiast. You've contributed to Spacey specifically, and for most of Python folks joining us today, you probably know Spacey or view Spacey. So, um, very interesting stuff there. So. First of all, how did I do with your intro? Um, it was <laughs> amazing. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. Good, great research. I know, right? <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. I, I need to do better than uh, <laughs> next time again. You know. So for for that, you know, that that I just said, um, can you fill in maybe some of the things that I might have left off, or some things that are not particularly obvious uh, from reading your LinkedIn or looking at your resume in this case? Yeah. So, so um, yeah, let's let's go through the beginning. Um, my bachelor thesis, which is uh, super cool, because um, in the coming demos that will I will show you guys, uh, I will kind of use the model I did for my bachelor thesis. I, re I reused it for a, a Wi-Fi demo. Yeah. And uh, to to talk about more context about this uh, thesis is that um, I built a model with Spacey, uh, which is an open source NLP library uh, that can analyze supplement reviews. So you have something like um, this product help for my joint pain and the model can detect entities like diseases or conditions like joint pain and can kind of map the effect on it. So you give the model the uh, text, uh, this help for my joint pain and it will map so, like a positive effect on joint pain. Okay. And yeah, that's something that I, I did like as my bachelor thesis. Then I got to work at Explosion as machine learning engineer working on the core um, uh, library. Uh, and I was able or I was given the chance to either further refine that model okay. there. And now at WeV8, I used the same model to uh, bring it even out further by adding vector search and then having uh, essentially a almost a product out of it. But I will uh, show it to you later. Nice. Um, yeah, that's very exciting. Interesting stuff that, you know, you've carried <laughs> along a very uh, nice theme throughout your, you know, from your bachelor's and now, you know, to your work and now even using it at Weavia. That's very exciting. Yeah. And uh, I know folks are excited to learn more about that as well <laughs> during, during the show. Yeah. All right. And um, yeah, so um, maybe a bit intro for myself. Um, so I'm a machine learning engineer at Weavia 8. Um, I'm in the developer growth team Okay. Uh, where we focus mostly on advocating all the exciting things about vector databases and AI and like creating content around it. 
And me for myself, I've been mostly working on like building these demos that kind of showcase what you can do with vector shares, uh, search and with VV8, um, like the uh, demo with the healthcare um, topic called health search or Verba, which is yeah. our Mac implementation or Magic Chat, which is a Streamlit app uh, where we used the Streamlit connector, database connector to VV8. Um, and yeah, like you said, um, I'm a big fan of open source. Um, I've like my 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 career is still relatively young, but I've like since the beginning uh, worked for open source, um, pushed the open source spirit, and that's also why I really love working for Weavid because uh, this open source spirit is really strong here. Uh, I can sense yeah. it, and yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, open source is uh, it's leading the way. Um, it's it's in, in in so many ways. We also have streamed open source, which uh, it's really amazing to see what folks are always building yes. with open source. So, with that, um, you know, before we get to the demos, and I know you've glossed over a bit of some of the demos that are kind of in the tool bag, <laughs> waiting to be showcased to the folks here. So, uh, before we even get to that, maybe some folks in the audience are kind of wondering, you know, I've heard about vector databases and, uh, or I think I know vector databases, but I would like to, I'd like for you to kind of explain to us rudimentary, what, are, what is a vector database? Yeah, so uh, like the name suggests, it's uh, another type of database that arised uh, like already some time ago, like years, but now got a lot of hype. And <clears throat> what vector databases basically do, they can efficiently store and retrieve vectors. And <clears throat> the term vector is like might be very <clears throat> abstract to uh, like people watching. Yeah. And vectors are pretty much just a list of numbers um, that can represent a position in a defined space. Uh, vectors are used in many different uh, fields. Uh, I think most of the people will know it at least from school when they had to do like vector algebra. Math. Um, yeah. <laughs> the math stuff. And um, for me, the first time I encountered like, or I needed to use my vector uh, school skills was in game development. Because in order to do games, you actually need to, to know how vectors work, uh, how to calculate distances, and the angle. Uh, and yeah, so vectors have places in many different domains. But vector databases in general are, as far as I know, mostly used in machine learning. And um, why is that? So to train or to use machine learning, uh, your data needs to be uh, represented as a numeric uh, data or like numeric type. Yeah. Um, since machine learning models are just very complex functions that have numbers as input and numbers as output. And these numbers are then often represented as vectors because we have all the math behind it to do like linear transformation, uh, calculating gradients and so on and so forth. And so vector databases, one thing is storing vectors. And the other half of all database bases are to retrieve objects uh, fast and precise. And this is also where vector databases are very different yeah. uh, to traditional databases. Because uh, in traditional databases, you have uh, traditional keyword matching, BM25, yeah. where you have where you search for like keywords, and then you um, see where where is that keyword uh, in which document, and the document with the highest match score wins, and then you have like uh, a document that matches your keyword. But in vector databases, we don't work with keywords; we work with vectors now. And the way it works is um, when you have a search query, you vectorize it to a vector, like let's say it's here yeah. and you look for vectors that are very near it. Like you calculate the distance and you return a list of like vectors that are most near and which sounds super abstract if you're not familiar with vector databases and yeah. you might ask like, why, what, what does the distance have to do with uh, the like, why is it relevant? Yeah. And the cool thing about, um, embedding your data with a machine learning <clears throat> is that you can, that these like lists of numbers re can represent specific attributes of your data. Um, a example that I often do is the cat dog uh, example. So let's say we embed 
the word cat and it's here and we embed the word dog it's here you can yeah. see they're close together because they're both animals uh, they're both cute pets they do meow and woof yeah um but what if we now add a vector like watermelon it will be somewhere around here because it's not an animal it's uh doesn't do any sounds it's not a pet you can eat it and we can see like the distance is it's farther apart and yeah. if we now add more uh vectors about fruits for example banana or apple we can see they're appearing here this means that this the distances they correlate with the semantic uh meaning so things that are semantically close together are like semantically similar. connected similar yes mm -hmm. and things farther apart are not and the same thing is applied when you have a search query so you search for something and the assumption is that everything that is near that vector is relevant to it yeah and this is how vector search works uh in comparison to this to traditional uh key, ma key matching yeah absolutely i think i think you did a good description there yes. and uh i tried my best <laughs> i mean yeah that, that, that was really perfect and the the way i always like person that like to think about it is if you have like a box because we all know what a box is you know you, you order amazon all the time you get boxes but uh I usually think of it as if you have a box and then you cut in the middle of it and then you see the the other part exposed. Uh, I would like to think of that like I guess as a vector database. This is how like I think uh, is a vector database. And then once you have those vectors, kind of like for your, your you know you were showing this cat, uh, it's located in different portions of the of, of the box. Mm. And so if you need That's to grab point. it, yeah, you kind of extract it from there and do some cool stuff with it. So yeah. and also kind of laying out the the landscape of it. You know, you have some text or some maybe some content, some documents, some images that you want to put in that box, which is the vector database. You have to have something like a model and we'll go into further details on this. You have a model that has to convert that into vectors and then load yes. it into the, the database. And then also you need to have another model to extract it and and, and be able to use it, uh, re retrieve it at the end. So these are some of the concepts we'll cover down the road as well. And uh, yes. super excited for you to kind of walk us through some of the demos so we can actually yeah. see it in action. So. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you uh, take it away from here and show us yeah. the demos. So, um, yeah, so the, the stuff that I just explained is still pretty much abstract. And these demos here that we built for VV8 and also to kind of show what vector search really does. Um, so the first one is book recommendation. It's uh, by my one of the best co-workers, uh, Adam, who built this demo to uh, that kind of... Um, gives you book recommendations based on a query you have. Okay. And uh, an example that I often do is Egyptian history, because that's a cool example where I can kind of show the difference to uh, like traditional search. So Egyptian history, I hope I wrote it correctly. And yeah, you can also uh, for yourself try it out. It's on bookrex.weavio.io. Cool. And now we get uh, a list of books did have something to do with Egyptian history. And the cool thing I want to highlight here is, for example, like the, the Orion mystery is that we got this book. It's obviously about Egyptian history because yeah. it's about pyramids. It's about this mystery and the uh, history. Um, but this book doesn't really, like it doesn't mention either Egyptian pers like directly or yeah. history. And this really shows that using vector search or like using these vector representation, uh, the search engine can actually understand your query. It also understands your data and it can thus can draw these semantic relationships. And I think this is super powerful uh, for like e-commerce, for example, or recommendation systems like these. Yeah. Um, another cool demo is awesome yeah. V8. And, and so... Uh, before, Sorry. Yeah. 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 Before go you go to this one, um, I guess the example from the book recommendation one, uh, you did search and it gave you some extra adjacent uh, results there, and, and you mentioned like the Orion mystery there. It's not specifically for Egyptian. Uh, you, I guess matching your search, which I think it draws the comparison for me. For if you were to search on something like Google, uh, the same prompt, it would just give you specific things with, with Egypt and it wouldn't have that, yes. uh, or it might not even have that extra context of like, oh, maybe this other one is kind of related to it. So that, I found that very, uh, very interesting there. Yes. So, and also a, a cool, 
cool example that also helped me understand vector search is um, something that Bob, our CEO, once said. Uh, with vector search allows you to build a system that when you search for cola, you get Pepsi. Nice. <laughs> yes. And in like, if you would use traditional uh, keyword matching, if you type in cola, you would get like Coca Cola the soda. You would get Coca Cola gummy bears. You would get yeah. Coca Cola, um, like a hat of Coca Cola. Exactly. <laughs> Vector search does it like is approaches this search differently. It will give you yeah, Pepsi. It will give you other beverages that like taste maybe similar. They look similar, and yeah, this is our like the, the fundamental difference between traditional search and vector search. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, so we we did it for movies. Um, it looks like this intended because it's a parody of um, a Twitter post. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, like same same uh, approach, like getting recommendations, uh, and it gives you different search types. So you can use traditional keyword search to see how that work or like how like what kind of results you would get yep. uh, semantic search is vector search and hybrid search is the cool new thing uh, it's the combination of both cool because um, I will go into it a bit further later but both keyword and semantic search have their trade-offs but if you combine both you can actually cancel out the trade-offs and have a very powerful search and that's like do something like wizard and do semantic search for now. Okay. We get these things. So we, we get also like keyword matches, but because like if if the title is wizard, it will mostly be about wizards, which yeah. makes sense when we search for wizards. Uh, but we have also something like, <laughs> I found that funny because we got the Witcher, uh, <laughs> the, the Polish, uh, po Polish uh, version of it. Yeah. Okay. Which also makes sense. Like witchers are kind of wizards in a sense, and yeah, it's also a cool, cool um, example. You can also, uh, for those who watch, who are watching and want to try it out themselves, yeah, uh, it's easily. Yeah, the link is already there. Amazing. Awesome. And, and for, yeah, and for this one, uh, you mentioned hybrid search. Uh, yes. Can you break it down a bit, like? You know, there's the search aspect of it. There's the vector combining with the regular search, and then how does that work to to be able to create, for example, this app? Uh, can you explain how, like, you entered wizard there? What happens after you enter wizard? And in, in, terms, in terms of hybrid search? Yes, hybrid or, search. Uh, break yeah. break down hybrid search for for yeah. For okay, so for hybrid search, uh, let's say you have like wizard as the query. Yeah. Uh, what Vivi does behind the scenes is it's running two search searches in parallel. It does BM25 on one hand and it okay. does picture search on the other hand. And then we have um, different, um, oh, how's it called? Not ranking, fusion, fusion, uh, fusion algorithms that fuse those two results together. Okay. Uh, so you have, you can say like 50% is from uh, like the top 50% of the one and top 50% of the other. And this way you can make sure that if you want to have exact matches, which is a very strong uh, advantage in using traditional search. Yes. But you can also have the, the context awareness of vector search. And then you're like, essentially your results uh, get better because you can get like both. Both of them. Both yeah. of both, 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 best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's the word. So yeah, this is amazing. It kind of uh, makes it much better. It gives you much, much better results of what you're looking for instead of like scrolling through trying to find the yes. most appropriate. Yes. One. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. Now we come to the uh, exciting part, um, health search. Uh, this, this is the demo I was talking about in, in the beginning with the bachelor thesis. Okay. So why is it oh. offline? Wait, let me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but maybe I can uh, just start explaining what it does. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, you have a like search bar here, uh, and you can search for uh, specific effects for specific conditions. Uh, we can use, for example, helpful for joint pain, and what it will do is it will do vector search on user reviews and it will accumulate like based on which review is to which product and will give yeah. you product recommendations based on the reviews let's just try it maybe that's okay yeah and these reviews are 
where are you getting the reviews from in this so the the reviews are from great so it worked before <laughs> <laughs> i promise yes <laughs> so the reviews are from iherb it's a uh, e-commerce site for supplements okay and we got the real reviews from there uh, we then analyzed them using the spacey model okay and then you uh, ingested everything to VV8 to do vector search on it. Oh, that's a bummer that I can't can't show you this. Um, yeah, maybe it will work afterwards. So let's yeah. skip this one and go to the other cool demo, uh, the Magic app, which was built with Streamlit. Uh, we did it uh, for the VV8, uh, not not VV8, the Streamlit database connector hackathon. Yes. Yes, uh, yes. Where we built a Streamlit connector to VV8, and we built a demo showcasing how you can use this uh, yeah, connector. connector. Yeah, and yeah, as you, as some people might already recognize, it's about Magic the Gathering. So uh, very, uh, very popular car trading card game. Uh, I think it's still popular. I played it when I was younger. Nice. Maybe there's some people in the uh, in the, in the audience, audience who yeah who still know it. I'm sure there's and... some fans there. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So um, what we did is we used this Gryfall API and got all twenty seven thousand cards and put them into VV8. And to to showcase what um, like how vector search like works. Yeah. And we offer four different search types. So BM25 is traditional keyword search. Uh, if you search for something, will directly match. We have vector search. We have hybrid search, the best of both. And we have generative search, which uh, we would now know as RAC. Um, so RAC, is based, RAC stands for retrieval augmented generation, which is a very confusing term. But yeah. basically, RAC is just you retrieve something, and then you give these results to a large language model and it will generate a response based on your query and that's basically it so to show you uh, let's use generative search yep. and our query is you gain life and the enemy loses life so we click on it and yeah stuff is happening so yep. what we get is a like generative answer based on our query and the results so based on the user query the uh, magic check would recommend depth of deathless, blah, blah, blah. And then we can look at a card, for example, let's do yeah, the light hue conversions. When you set this scheme in motion, each opponent loses free life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way, which is nice. directly the card that we're looking for, like a card that steals life and uh, gives lives. And we can also go ahead and like vampire cards with flying ability. And the rack will also like give you the, the best card, explain why, uh, give you other um, options you can use. You can see here like vampire has flying, the effect flying. Yeah, so, so for people that know magic, um, uh, magic is, yeah, okay, magic is very complicated. Uh, we'll not try to uh, <laughs> explain it, but, but yeah. these cards ha have like different properties. They have like different colors, they have different effects, uh, they have there are different types, like we have creature, vampires, whatever, uh, that play a role within the game. Okay. Um, so I think for people that know magic, this might be a, also a cool, fun experiment demo to play with. Yeah. Um, awesome. So I think they're kind of surfacing the the different cards that might be what you're looking for as well. Uh, I think that's very, uh, very cool demo there for sure. Yeah, so and I think, yeah, sorry. and I also think for folks that are maybe trying to combine VB8 with Streamlit or use Streamlit as their user interface for their application, uh, definitely go check out the VB8 connector. Uh, and there it is. Uh, <laughs> there and, it is. Yeah, and hook it up to your uh, use it use it for your app. It's it's going to be really easy for you to to be able to set it up and uh, get going there real fast, uh, as you can see from the example code there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So and you can also uh, pip install it uh, right away. And yeah, if you go to this repo, you can also you get also like a guide. Awesome. And, yeah. Go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
So, and the last demo that I'm going to show you all is Verba, which is our REC demo. Um, yeah, so again, what REC does is you have a query, you have you retrieve search results, and then you put the query and the search results to an LLM to generate a response, which makes any chatbot like on steroids, which is like, it's also a super hype topic, um, yeah. which I will also talk about it later. Um, and this specific demo is also, yeah, like, like you can see, uh, accessible. And the cool thing about this demo is that we um, ingested all VV documentation, blog posts, and also video transcripts, nice. which makes this really the, the a great uh, VV8 assistant for any related questions. Uh, if it's like something um, as trivial, uh, trivial as asking what VV8 is, for example, what is VV8 question mark? What it will do is it will generate a response for you based on your question. And we'll also list the, or show you the uh, sources and the exact extract uh, within a document. So for example, like uh, you have your documentation of developer VV8, uh, you can click on it and go to the page right away. Um, or you have like block, um, block entries where VV8 is explained um, yeah, you can see the, the different like paragraphs on the top that you can select. Yeah. The numbers represent the score. Um, it's using hybrid search. So, um, exact keyword matching, which is perfect if you look for specific code snippets, but also, uh, vector results, if you like want the system to understand you. So we can also go ahead and ask like how to use hybrid search, uh, in Python. Cool. And then it will also give you code examples uh, that you can do. Uh, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff you can do with vector databases. Yeah. And yeah, that's and yeah, this is really cool. And I'm 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 thinking right now because ChatGPT has like the online, I guess, uh, it, it, like you can go, you can do search on the that's internet. True. How would you compare it with like? Because this one is very good because it's like tailored towards like specific content that is of high value, high signal, and it answers the questions based on those high signal uh, content. If you compare it to maybe something like searching on Chat GPT, the same questions, uh, do you think would it would it look at the same places and find the same answers, or have you not even uh, considered like that that, that uh, difference there? Yeah, I think for for some topics, Chat GPT might be better for like general knowledge. Yeah, um, but I think the 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 big um, yeah, the big advantage of having like these systems, these rack systems is that you can, you, you're not dependent on the model knowing the specific domain. Yeah. So in uh, Verba, you can import any data you want. It can be a new paper that was just released that the GPT model hasn't seen yet. Yeah. Um, it can be tailored towards your own, um, yeah, like pool of data. It can be, uh, also hybrid, uh, not hybrid, uh, private, meaning that if you have like sensitive information that you want, don't want to send over ChatGPT, you can, um, for example, Verba, you can run Verba locally and you okay. can change the LLM behind it. So you can, you, you can use open source models from Hugging Face, Mistral, Llama, or you can use a different provider like, like OpenAI or um, Cohere. And I think that's also why these systems are in so are so popular right now. Um, is especially that they're, you're like not dependent on the training data, and you can even though you, the Chat GPT model might not know about the secrets of VV8, yeah, you can still utilize the uh, the amazing like um, functionality of GPT, like summarizing information to still answer very specific VVA questions by oh. providing this, like by providing the right um, context. Context, yeah. Um, and I think that that's a, that's a very powerful thing now because instead of like finding very generalized answers, you are like very tailored towards that extra documentation you've given it. So that's that's really cool. Awesome. So yeah, this, this has been some really cool demos that you have. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe you can check on the one that didn't work earlier um, if yeah, it works please. now.
please work. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Maybe I have any, I have an idea. Okay. Um, let's try this one. Does this work? Let me see. That just works. Okay, interesting. This is uh, actually a okay. It's an interesting bug, but let's just uh, go for it and let's see if this works. All right. work. Let's okay. do it. Okay, <laughs> nice. It works. There you go. All right. So it, uh, for some reason it doesn't look good, but don't mind. Don't mind it. So Sorry. okay, let's go. Let's rewind. Rewind back. Yes. Um, so what we did here, we're searching for products that are helpful for joint pain. And what we get here is a list of uh, products, supplements in specific. Um, supplements are not considered medicine. They're like like vitamin D, something that, that you take with eating. Um, you see uh, stuff happening at the top. So what we do here is kind of like rag. Okay. So we have a generated product summary, which kind of looks at all products that were now received and then generates an answer or like, recommendation based okay. on the query and the uh, products. We also have generated product uh, review summaries. Oh, cool. So let's let's just click on one and we get more information about that one. Uh, how about how, how much stars description? And here we see the reviews. OK, let me uh, can I yeah, zoom it in a bit like here. So this actually works, suffered from joint pain, blah, blah. And these conditions are marked. And this is also uh, through the help of the spacey model that like detects diseases, conditions. And yeah, right right away, he, this is also a cool example for uh, vector search. Uh, wait, here, knee pain. So we were searching for like joint pain, but yeah. it gave us also like stuff like knee pain because like joint pain, knee pain, they're very similar and like yeah. there's a joint in the knee. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense, or you have like bone bone injuries, problems with the knees, um, arthritis, uh, and you can find all these different reviews through the help of vector search. Because if you would now use just use like traditional uh, keyword matching, you would get all reviews that are about joint pain. Yes, but you would lose so much more because people ex like express themselves super differently. They use yeah. different um, wording different terms, but like the meaning can be the same, but they can word it differently. Yes. And that's also something that vector search is covering. Yeah, I think that does really well because just putting in joint pain and yeah. it, it giving you like extra content that maybe you weren't even aware. So it helps you kind of discover things that you didn't know before. So um, that's really cool. And I also like the fact that it also does the summary for the reviews. Because most of the time you, you want to buy something, you, you go yeah. to the reviews first, like, what are people saying? You know, what, 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 yeah, we want to get some yes. actual things that people have used and uh, they're saying. Does it also give you like the negative comments and I guess, yes. reviews? OK. Um, so so the model does. Um, okay. let's, let's see. Um, bad for joints. Let's see. Nice. Or, or, or like, let's do stomach, because it's probably a very stomach, bad for stomach. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty neat app. Um, Zero stomach. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, wrong. Yeah, wrong spelling. Ah. It the vector search also uh, covers typos, so there's yeah. no worry. We'll take care of it. So let's see. Nice. Blah, blah. Can't fight. Does not cause me. Yeah, that's 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 good. We are looking for bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes. For example, had cost me tertial cramps. Ah. Oh no, wait. No, this product three. Yeah, so it's actually a bit hard harder to find bad stuff. Yeah. Which is good. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I promise you it works. <laughs> it works, yes, it does. But it's good that it captures that. That way you get a yeah. Yeah, if, if somebody's just looking for something, at least they can get and understand, hey, this is, uh, I'm buying this because I'm more aware, I have more information and context about what I'm trying to purchase here. Um, but this is a really good uh, example of uh, using uh, vector databases to kind of yeah. improve your daily life and apply to it. So um, really cool demo there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, glad that it worked out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so now that we've kind of covered most of these demos and uh, most of the our conversation now will kind of revolve around um, kind of going over 
the main, some of these main concepts, I'm trying to break them down a bit more. And the first one I want to kind of get your opinion here is, you know, there's so many vector databases and maybe some folks right now watching, maybe they work for a company and they have this really cool idea they want to tell their manager about. They want to, you know, use a vector database to do something really cool with their, maybe their docs or some process or some data that they use at the company. And they're wondering, well, how do I even evaluate vector databases? Or first of all, I have heard about WeV8 and maybe I want to explore WeV8. So what do you? What would you say that WeV8 does really well uh, at this time? Yeah, great question. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a first of all, there's a lot of competition, um, which shows that vector databases are a good thing and yeah. they're needed in this AI ecosystem. Um, and they're also like like the other competitors are like have great people on it, um, great minds, and. Yeah, I can definitely say uh, good things about VV8. Uh, what what I think we do pretty pretty good, um, and of course, like I mentioned before, uh, the first thing is of course we're open source. Yes, this means you can use us for free. Um, this also allows us to work with the community super close. Yes, uh, we have a transparent roadmap uh, where people can request features, and push up um, yeah, like feature requests. Um, and I think without the community, we like VV wouldn't be what it is today, and which is super great. And because of that, that we open source, we also have great partnerships with other open source libraries like Hugging Face, uh, Langchain, Haystack, Lama, uh, Lama Index, and uh, Streamlit. Yeah. Um, and it's super cool to like integrate VV8 or like VV8 is so integrated into the AI ecosystem. Yes. Which uh, makes it super flexible for users that like, I want to use, um, yeah, I want to use Hugging Face together with uh, VV8 and it's already there, uh, taking away a lot of overhead. And the reason why, uh, it's also so easy to be integrated into this AI ecosystem is because we view it as built in a modular fashion. So you can plug and play different uh, large language models to vector SE data. You can plug and play different uh, re-rankers from Kuhir or any other um, <clears throat> provider. And that's because we view it is written completely custom. So yeah. all the stuff that's powering we view it is written by, by ourselves, maintained by ourselves. Uh, we're not relying on other dependencies uh, so much. Awesome. And that's also like we often use the term AI native vector database because we were built from the ground up to work with AI. Um, because we, we see a lot of vector databases uh, or like many matured search engines yeah. now jumping on vector databases. And they, for example, they are not built from the ground up for AI. Yeah. They, they're a matured, great system for traditional search. Um, if you have a use case for a traditional search, search, they're amazing for it. Um, but now adding this new vector search complexity into and trying to integrate it into a already matured and refined system is a very uh, a challenge on their own, which the which AI native vector databases don't have because um, they were built for AI from the beginning. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah. I think one cool thing, or one of the coolest thing that VV8 has, which makes it uh, like stand out, is hybrid, hybrid search. Um, because we because we build everything from ground up, it's super efficient. Uh, both searches run in parallel, out yeah. of the box. Uh, we take <clears throat> we take away a lot of uh, overhead from the user, yeah. but can still at the same time provide full customizability for everything, for every aspect of the database, of the search, because we wrote the code ourselves. Yes. And we uh, make it for the developer easy to like fine tune anything. But uh, for those who don't care, um, take away the overhead. Yes. And of course, for the big players, uh, we're enterprise ready. So we have cool features like multi-tenancy that allows like data isolation, uh, on your database infrastructure, which yeah. helps with data privacy, data compliance. We have like a lot of uh, compliance uh, certificates, uh, which which is very important if you want to go like go big. Yes. Uh, 
where other smaller vector databases are good for prototyping. So you also with VD8 you can easily do prototyping um, since it's free, you can iterate on it very fast. But if you want to scale it, it also provides every tool uh, that you need uh, because you can use VV8, like I said, locally for free. You can use Docker. You can uh, deploy VV8 for free in your own infrastructure. But you can also use like WCS, which is our service thingy, where you can like let let us host it for you. Yes. Uh, so that you can also scale horizontally to infinity, uh, or use marketplaces like AWS. So we we provide a lot of customizability and in the way you use VV8 and where you use VV8, and yeah, that's that's my sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a pretty good job there, and. Uh... You, you, you covered some really important concepts um, within that that I think uh, most of the people are kind of maybe interested in as well. And uh, uh, I think security and things like multi-tenancy has become like a very interesting topic. Uh, being able to, uh, for folks maybe to access specific or ask, get answers or, or specific questions for maybe a, a given username. It could be something like RBAC uh, add, add addition on top, of, uh, on top of that would be yes. something... Uh, very interesting. So kind of transitioning over to, um, you know, how you evaluate personally things like uh, embedding models. So embedding models, and I think, I know we touched about this a bit in the beginning, kind of the model that does, you know, you put your your content in, you, it gets converted into vectors and then gets stored in uh, VV8. So there's so many vec uh, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, vector, vector, vector models, really, uh, in this case, that are, that you can use to, to, to do that part. Um, I know there's uh, MTEB in the, uh, leaderboard on on Hugging Phase where you can go and see the the, the leading uh, models that you can use. Where do you personally, uh, I guess, find some of these models? And also, how do you evaluate which models should I use for maybe a different modality? Now we have you know, uh, different modalities. How do you, what, what, I just want to understand your thought process when you're approaching that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Yeah, yeah. definitely the uh, leaderboard on Hugging Phase is a great place to like get started. Um, the way embedding works for like, yeah, you, you need different models for different modalities. Uh, there are also like many models now approaching that are multimodal uh, where you can just throw in text, audio and yeah. uh, images that will also provide you with embeddings like vector embeddings. Yeah. Um, I think for people getting started with the project or working out a POC, I would use like, um, a no domain trained model, like generalized, like models for generalized knowledge. Um, yeah. um, if you want, like, also depends if, uh, like, if if you're fine with paying, I would actually suggest Ada from Open uh, AI because they're they're like uh, every, they're good for basic testing. Yes. And if you want to use open source models, there are also a lot of plenty. Like I uh, like you mentioned on the leaderboard of hanging face yes um if you have like if you have the, the hardware power to uh, host host the these host. stuff and afterwards after you proceed i would uh, suggest like looking more into the limitations of okay. the embedding model that you have right now um maybe look for models that are trained on your specific domain so if you have healthcare uh, there will probably be embedding model for healthcare application that was trained on healthcare data or you're working on um, like um, legal rights there yeah. will be a embedding model probably for legal rights and then or even train your own model and or fine tune it or yeah or fi even fine tune it uh, yeah. and there are different techniques to really evaluate how good an embedding model is um, something yeah, like in simple form, uh, you can have a data set where you have like, where you can say that two data points should be considered similar. Yes. And then you look at the actual embeddings and look at their distance. And you have a, like a threshold of a certain distance. And if they're below that certain distance, they're considered embedding uh, like similar. Okay. And then you, you would do that for a lot of stuff and then get a good sense of does the embedding model uh, retrieve this similar context correctly like i like i supposed to or uh, do i need to either fine-tune the model or use another model okay 
Awesome. Yeah, that 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 kind of narrows it down pretty well. I think for uh, I like your point about for beginners being able to, if somebody's just kind of venturing into this, they can just go ahead and use whatever um, the easy the easy one they can find, and then kind of yeah. grow from there and build it up from there, depending on their use case. Uh, exactly. Yeah, the other thing is uh, kind of covering the scalability and performance. And most of the time, you know, if you have like small data set, it's not a big problem. But when it scales and then you have like a tons of data, for example, let's say like real-time data or near real-time data, really. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody's running an e-commerce platform and they're getting all these orders, or maybe they're recording even their yeah. mouse clicks or mouse movements for the clients. Maybe somebody's browsing on their site and they're just kind mm. of hovering around. And maybe they want to give them like maybe something like real-time recommendations uh, based on their browsing history or even how they're browsing at the moment. So that's a lot of data coming in for like yeah. maybe so many people visiting the website. So how how does that get handled in terms of like real-time data updating and also kind of deletions or just kind of handling the, the that amount of large-scale data? How is that handled uh, within VV8? Yeah, great question, great question. Definitely super important. Um, in terms of scaling, my, uh, our CTO, Etienne, has a great, great quote. So uh, VV8 scales to infinity okay. until something happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so VV8 can uh, like VV8 can easily handle like billions of vectors. Um, with if you have like if you're on WCS or like or service thing, uh, you can scale horizontally super well, um, taking away a lot of the uh, work for the developer. Yeah. And uh, VV8 has an integration to Confluent, which is a data data streaming platform, which yeah. allows VV8 to ingest real time data. Okay. And yeah, like you said, for, for these real-time systems, it's super important that they're fast and reliable. And um, through the like features like replication, uh, where you replicate your data base to different uh, nodes, yeah, it really helps to um, yeah have a like reliable source that is like you have a lot of requests and uh, you need your system to be reliable that it. Uh, has no downtime. Yeah. Um, and also help helps with like the throughput. Like if you, you need to handle a lot of um, queries and uh, things like replication make it make it easier to to handle these uh, large amounts of um, yeah API calls. Yes. And another very important thing that might not be uh, that obvious is if you import an object into VV8 you can access that object right away. Mm, interesting. Which sounds, yeah, like makes sense, right? Yeah. But many other vector databases, uh, it's like you import the data, uh, but it's not available right after because yeah. it still needs to be indexed because they're using an async technique, um, which makes them faster on paper. OK. But for systems like a real-time um, system you need to be able to access the data right after it was imported yeah otherwise you will run into errors you will have a slower query time uh which will make everything explode yes so that's that's a small detail uh yeah when you have to think about uh when you build with like uh, real-time data but vv8 is uh, ready for it yeah, absolutely. And uh, you, you mentioned that is a, is a small detail, but I think it's a small but very important detail. Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> especially especially if it, if, it, if it involves revenue for folks or yes. Um, yes. having very low latency platforms. I think that's a very important thing that uh, that plays a role there. So that's very that's very interesting. And so just kind of to close out here on my questions, uh, you know, there's been like the the recent news with uh, partnership with Google Gemini with VV8, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. And uh, your CEO Bob uh, specifically mentioned, um, you know, talking about VV8 and Gemini kind of reducing the need for developers to write custom code. Yes. Uh, could you maybe expand a bit about what that means? Yeah. So um, that's also um, why it's so great that VV8 has this modular architecture because before Gemini we already had a module for uh, Palm. Okay. So it was super easy for us to also implement Gemini now. And what Bob meant by writing less code is that through this modular architecture, uh, we're taking like the overhead for the developer to write like the code for vectorization okay. or the code for rack answers. Um, 
because it's already in. You just like like I said, plug and play. Say okay, Gemini. Here's my API key. It works like the VV API stays the same. You don't have to write uh, any custom code. And with like with one VV8 query, you can do multiple steps, which you would have need to uh, write yourself. Yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. And yeah. That's that's what I'm what he meant by writing less custom code because it's already there, it's already integrated into the platform. Yeah, yes. that's awesome. Yeah, we always want to write less code. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, just kind of shifting gears, I think we'll we'll start taking the questions from the audience here. And uh, the first one we have is from HR from YouTube. Um, how do I integrate a larger LLM like ChatGPT with my database proprietary data? I can put in, for example, Pinecone here, you said, and uh, surface it via Streamlit. Uh, I'm going to make some Python machine learning predictions on my data. Um, I'm not sure if that's really clear, but uh, I think the main question there is integrating a larger LLM like ChatGPT with uh, proprietary data. Um... Well, it works with with VV8, so you can plug and play uh, open source, uh, open AI uh, LLMs into there okay. uh, that cover both vectorization and also generating answers. Okay, I think uh, yeah, yeah. The other part of the question was uh, I want users to be able to prompt and and interact with the data like they can with ChatGPT. So uh, my assumption is they have proprietary data; they want to load mm -hmm. it maybe to a vector database, and then use a Streamit app to be able to let users interact with that data. Um, I think that's very feasible. Perfect. Yeah, uh, use use our cool uh, Streamlit uh, VV8 connector to uh, have this connection with your front end and VV8. Uh, you can use VV8 for free, put your data inside. Um, if you have like a chat, uh, chat GPT API key, you can put it into VV8 and then go crazy and yeah. have your cool project. Awesome, yeah, that would be real cool. And uh, next question here from, Juan Carlos uh, from uh, LinkedIn. When you talk about vector databases, that uh, that includes CAD drawings or geospatial database uh, stores stored as vectors. Yeah, so, so you you could actually like uh, store them there as well, um, which is a super interesting use case um, because yeah, yeah. So so yes, you can use them also for geospatial. Uh, data and because I I actually don't know what CAD drawings are. I think that's probably something to do with architecture uh, drawings, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I th I, yeah. I think that's really that's a really good uh, use case. Yeah, um, I guess it just uh, it also depends on I guess the 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 vector embedding model. You can so long as you if you can embed it, you can uh, if you can uh, convert it to vectors, you can embed it, right? Yeah, and it also depends of of like. What um, because in VV8 you can also you don't always need to have like text you don't okay. have text but you can also give give a vector already so you give in vector as a query and then it will search for the nearest thing and if you need that functionality uh, then you can also you can use any vector data representation if if it's geospatial data or architectural data okay cool awesome. And uh, the next question is from Dylan Loder, um, LinkedIn as well. Can you adjust the mixing parameter for each vector database on the fly in VV8? Um, like a slider you can change through the Streamlit web app? Yeah, so so if, if you mean like search parameters, uh, then yeah, of course. Like, yes, you can. Awesome, cool. Yeah, and I, I guess the other part for Streamlit, yes, you can just kind of yeah. Tag the the stream slider to the to, to the parameter, and then you can adjust it from there and handle it on the back end for sure. Awesome. And uh, let's see, we have another question uh, from Citrac Fuller. Uh, hopefully, I pronounced your name right there. Uh, do you have a comparison uh, with ChatGPT for that Baba? Um, I'm guessing uh, he did mention that I took his question, so maybe I that, that we already answered that. That I think oh I think it might have been related to how does uh, Barber compare with kind of searching directly on something like ChatGPT, uh, the online version, which I think we answered that question already. Yeah, um, good good stuff. I'm sorry for taking your question, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you got an answer for it either way. <laughs> uh, 
All right. So is it possible to connect VVA to open source models like Mistral um, or Mistral 7B? Thanks. Yes. So um, you can, like, uh, like I mentioned, VVA can work with any vector. So if you have the vector, you can put it into VVA right away. So if you import objects, you can uh, already define a vector for that object. And yeah, uh, Weave is also integrated with hugging face models. So we awesome. got you covered. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right. Let's see. Uh, the next question is from Arvan. Um, and he's asking, are you using APIs or self-hosted models? Um, yeah. So f for myself, um, I'm using APIs, uh, like Cohere, uh, OpenAI. Um, yeah, right. uh, I'm a bit. Uh, it might have been written. It might have been written, uh, something. Do, do you mean me, Arnav? Yeah. <laughs> or do you mean have, <laughs> Yeah, I think it might have been related to some of the one of the demos that you were demoing. Uh, yeah. Earlier. So yeah, they're all using uh, APIs. Okay, cool. And uh, we have a question from Wen Liang, and uh, he's asking where the image and product uh, data co are coming from: backend database or web scraping? Um, yeah. So. The, the data is from web scraping. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think all these were like mostly um, demo. Yes. All right, and this is just a comment. We made it as a rad project. I love the willingness to put it out there. We use so nice. many ways. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think uh, the other question is how, uh, I guess from Armand again, how do I ensure that my LLM only answers the data which I provide? Uh, anything else is not answered or user is prompted to ask questions about business? So, yeah, this depends on your LLM, um, and it's mostly like prompt engineering. Um, I, I think like for ChatGPT Ch four, um, it does really well when, when you define the, the like the limitations it has. Um, so I would uh, suggest. It also depends with what LLM you're currently working with. Yes, but I would just um, suggest like trying different prompts. Cool. Yeah, prompt engineering is um, underrated sometimes. Yes. Uh, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Yes, it makes a huge difference how, how you prompt it. Yes. Awesome. And uh, question from Jatin. Uh, is VVA a competitor to Pinecone? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and uh, finally, we just have a comment of appreciation from Dylan. Again, a great presentation, Edward. I also appreciate Thank that. Thank you so much. Yeah, you did, you did a good job. So. A few questions for you before you head out. Just gonna standard generic questions. Um, do you have any predictions yourself uh, uh, for twenty twenty four for AI? Any bold predictions? Yeah. So, so I think that uh, large language models will keep getting better, uh, faster, cheaper. Um, that open source LLMs will grow more, which will allow everyone to build like amazing things, uh, build huge agent networks, and uh, really redefine how we inter interact with like data and knowledge. Um, either way, I think uh, vector databases will be definitely play a big role in, yes. in this AI journey. Uh, the only question, of course, is uh, which vector database will uh, stand in the pinnacle of all? Yes, <laughs> which, one, which one will rule them all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely interesting to see what's going to happen in the future. It's uh, it's it's it's, it's mind-blowing what's happening in the, even the few past few months. So it's exciting to see what's uh, ha going to happen in the future. And the last question here for you to call us out. Um, uh, as you know, the industry changes every day. So what are your go-to sources for staying up to date with AI mostly? Yeah, so uh, for myself, it's really my team members and coworkers. Um, we're working on like different fields. We have people like working on a main code base, uh, researchers that like, grab the biggest uh, paper uh, or the hottest paper. We have a reading group in within VV8 where we can also share news. Um, I have one-on-one -on -one with coworkers where okay. we can like just show, hey, man, I I saw this cool stuff uh, this week. Um, other than that, I use, like of course, like Twitter, LinkedIn, and Hacker News, uh, following like credible people, uh, yeah. like engineers, scientists from big companies, and um, it's super hard to stay up to date. And even for me, it's like, oh, there's a new thing. I was I, like, I'm still working uh, the stuff from last week. Yes. <laughs> so it's super, yes. super hard. 
yes it's really it's like drinking from a fire horse and, and yes. you know, at very rapid pace so it's you gotta keep <laughs> up with what's coming in and also learn what's already out there so uh, interesting sources i always like that question because it gives me a perspective of what people are using to learn maybe some mm -hmm. folks uh, in the audience will take some of this and use it themselves so with that um this has been really amazing uh episode of the streaming show and thank you edward <laughs> again for, for joining thank us you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. And um, thank you for, list for listeners for the great questions and engaging with us today. So be sure to join us next Tuesday, uh, January 23rd, uh, for a conversation with Craig Peters from GitHub. So that'll be another session next week. Ooh. Yes. And uh, with that, bye for now and happy streaming to everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.